personalized medicine has put out a call to people for contributing their personal health information, their data, genomic or other, in order for us to study them to understand through this analysis better disease and health. That requires a lot of people making their personal health information accessible to researchers or others. So the question would be for us, how are we going to present participation and enable participation as a matter of choice that we endorse, as a matter of choice that we need and has to uh, become the case. So on the one hand, we have personalized medicine requiring a lot of openness, which we are likely to endorse. On the other hand, we have our worries about uh, risks to privacy. So the biggest, I think, challenge would be how to navigate the terrain between openness on the one hand and privacy, a very important value in our society, on the other hand. We see citizens, not necessarily unhealthy patients, but just regular citizens who are eager to collect the data, they're eager to contribute them to some research project, sometimes not necessarily within our standard institutions, the whole citizen science, for example, movement, and they can provide a, uh, an amazing source of information that if we use it for personalized medicine research or other health research, we could have a, an amazing resource that can accelerate the findings and, their, um, and the translation to uh, clinical care. And if you look at um, how open is my data, for example, the answer is completely open. Everyone can see everything you enter or upload. There are people who don't want to collect data about themselves because they don't, they don't want to define themselves through that. They don't see the value in, in doing that. And I think we have to have space for these differences. So it's important to understand that these big changes in genomics are happening in the context of the big data era. So we have not just genomic data, we have all other sorts of data. And that has put a lot of pressure on our notion of privacy. Now, privacy is understood perhaps slightly differently in different cultures and in different legal systems. But in the big data world and in the big world of science today, we are talking about a global convergence. We need data from everywhere and the national boundaries aren't as important in that respect. It seems that the ways we had to protect privacy before are not fit for purpose today. And so what we will have to do is to think very creatively and very hard about what would be the most appropriate ways of respecting privacy in the big data era. So we have now the capacity to know a lot about the children that are not yet born and, born, and we can also know a lot about the future of our born children. The question that we are going to face is how much of this information we should know and what are we going to do with that information. I think it's clear that if we can have an immediate effect in improving one's life, that is fairly straightforward, we use the information, but the majority of the information we're going to get through this analysis is not going to be for immediate use. And I think we would have as a society to determine how we're going to go about that. It's going to be a challenge because on the one hand, it's possible we can find out a lot and some people will want to do that. But on the other hand, we would have to protect the future of these children and allow them the choices to be made when they're in a position to make choices.